folks tuesday night between the rolls time welcome aboard thanks for joining us uh this is our talk show so uh yeah it's our talk show sorry we're still uh we still have a little bit of con hangover we're going to go ahead and discuss that as well first follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to shoot the shit about D, join our discord if you want to buy our cool stuff like even this uh last year's murder hobo con shirt or a duvet pillow bedspread beach towel shit like that link is down there uh if you want to buy some cool things for your nose go on over to oddfishgames.com check out their adventure sense they have 60 of those items uh all the way from putrid sewers up to i think uh gypsy wagon is one of my more personal favorites and if you're in the market for some custom dice, don't forget to go over to Twitter and hit up at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. See if they've got time or the energy to go ahead and make some personalized dice. Uh, that being said, if you ever want to be on this show or on a one shot next Saturday, hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. We will do our best to get you on here. First timers always get risen to the top like the cream that they are this is between the rolls we will uh you know what i think i set up the wrong uh field i think we're doing the open ah well fuck it nobody cares we're tired like i said <laughs> we're tired fence. we got con hangover boys and girls that's true. We don't have con crud. No, nobody caught COVID that we know of from our convention. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and introduce you to the other two participants tonight. First up is David. David, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm David, and I'm recovering from the con. Uh, no. Uh, hi, I'm David. I'm usually here on Between the Rolls. Uh, I'm also on... Our Thursday show, Cacophony, as well as the Calamity campaign, uh, Calamity A-side and B-side, I play the characters Zadar, Ingve, and Crow uh, in their respective campaigns. And uh, every once in a while, you can catch me on a one-shot uh, here, like every other Saturday, out opposite our campaign Saturdays, so... Anyway, that's me in a nutshell, folks. Con headache, man. We're yeah, all just rolling Carrie, with it. <laughs> right. Carrie, you're up next. Who are you? Tell us about yourself. Not if you lock her in the garage. Uh, folks, <laughs> folks, like we said, uh, it, it was a long con. It was a good con. It was a two-day con, in case you missed it. Um, let's go ahead and discuss that first, boys and girls. Uh, Murder Obocon 2 uh, went off this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We had close to 40 different games, uh, five vendors, uh double digit sponsors uh not all the numbers getting a check hopefully they take paypal that's easier uh but they will be getting paid as they are our con sponsor uh it being a charity con we pay the low overhead uh and everything after that goes off to the charity so uh david initial impressions on the con uh i enjoyed the con i thought it was great this year i think our, our virtual venue was pretty fun uh we had the the beach set up in boardwalk uh venue and uh the con goers that i spoke with and all that you know i mean even one of them came up and said "Woo, that was fun you know <laughs> walking along the boardwalk so yeah, then we're talking about you yeah yeah so uh yeah it was um it was a great experience uh met met some nice people got to uh play in a, a couple of different games uh and game systems other than uh D and d and um yeah it was just overall just uh just a very fun experience i mean yeah tiring when you work it but <laughs> 
Yeah, it 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 was a long two days, boys and girls. Uh, Carrie, initial impressions. What did you think of the con? Gatekeep that shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. We're just going to keep gatekeeping that shit. Uh, and you also got to play in at least one thing, right? Okay, very good. I did that a lot. (laughs) Yeah, after a while, it's like I just want to avoid people. But uh, folks, in reality, uh, we do use a virtual venue. It's not just all, uh, hey, here's your Zoom meeting. Uh, Although there's a lot of Zoom meetings. uh, And that is okay. But the virtual venue, uh, it is still up uh, at topia.io slash murder hobo con go ahead and take a look at it uh the fine folks at topia have helped us out with the venue twice now uh it works it uh uh i i don't know i i give it a thumbs up i give it two thumbs up what about you guys oh yeah definitely uh everybody that i've talked to that have seen it for the first time thought it was great we've got other people that do other cons that are asking us about it trying to get information so, I mean, it, it's a good concept. It's a great platform to use within your other platforms, you know, to, to launch your games. So to give, them, to give something to do. I mean, we had a band, mm-hmm. we had a movie on how to build castles. We had one of our, uh, one of my personal favorite shows playing in the background. We had seminars. Uh, and if you are curious, as David pointed out, several were, uh, Adventures in Phil Bar over on Drive Through RPG. This month's free edition, because every first Friday is a free one. Uh, this one contained the notes that uh, we took on last year's. I'll probably be putting out an addendum for a two day con. Uh, things that I, I don't think I maybe touched upon enough in the first offering, uh, but it is free. Uh, I don't know. It's less than 20 pages. I think go on over to drive through RPG search adventures at bill bar. And I believe it's H O F eight uh, murder hobo con primer. So take a look at that. Now, uh, we here at murder hobo Inc also had two games. Uh, both of our fine staff members here played in them. Uh, played in the first one, at least. Uh, 331, Confectioner's Conundrum. Uh, Carrie, we'll start with you, uh, since we started with David last time. What would you think of... Con- Go ahead and give the basis or the, the base for con- Confectioner's Conundrum. Wow. It was life, a riveting game. Life life was a box of chocolates for that game. There we go. Yeah. You just never know what you're going to get, and that's pretty much what happened. So. The goal was to figure out why the chocolate hadn't been delivered. Yeah. Con hangover, folks. Hashtag con hangover. Naked hippie commune. All sounding like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> well, let's ask David since you covered the first half. Well, David, uh, what happened? after that, we uh explored the island uh some more uh we got directions from the hippies (laughs) they uh told us uh yeah you go here and you take a left you take a right they yeah (laughs) they gave us a choice either left or right uh left i believe was like a tower with a rumor of cannibals back that way and then the other was mysterious cave to 
explore. And that's where we headed to next. So, yeah, it was crazy. It's just like, okay, we're exploring this cave. You know, going into it, we noticed there's this monolithic statue uh, reminiscent of, uh, you know, Easter Island, you know, statues. And uh, we enter the cave and there's this strange creature. Frank, I don't know if that was like a golem just leave or something. Just, just leave her. Uh, the strange creature was a uh, animated statue. Oh, okay. I was trying to figure out what it was, but yeah. Animated statue, jukebox, pretty much that, that's what it was. Uh, and then we ran into an encounter uh, as we explored deeper uh, into the cave uh, we run into uh, a youngling uh, green dragon. Uh, yeah, and then... Black dragon. Oh, it was a black dragon. Okay, mm -hmm. black dragon. So, yeah, uh, and the mayhem ensued. Yeah, uh, initiatives with, like, clerics not healing and stuff like that. It got, it got kind of scary for a little bit, folks. <laughs> so, I almost got them. <laughs> yep, yep the black dragon took out the statue the statue went careening down into our party <laughs> so yeah a lot of us took a lot of damage uh after that nice. after we slew the dragon we decided hey what do dragons have hordes so we you know we went to explore the cave uh, to try to find the dragon horde all we found was a mess and uh we did find one item we didn't even think to cast whether or not it was magic, magic detection on it or anything like that. It was. Uh, yeah, it was. And um, yeah, we, uh, we left the cave victorious and continued our search through the, the island. And we come upon um, a grove full of tree, cacao trees and yeah, monkeys flinging what monkeys fling at us you know of course getting hit with that and uh yeah we finally uh come up upon uh some people of small stature smallish stature like dwarven um they um yeah burning fields uh, control burns i thought it was reminiscent of like burning sugar cane fields you know how they, okay that's what i thought it was that, that was by design Okay. Yeah. And we find the cacao and uh, we make a trade with them. They wanted our magic item that we had, which was this steel egg that we had. So, so yeah, fair trade. We just got it, got the chocolate, uh, the cacao and just got the hell out of there. We had to roll whether or not to see whether our captain was still waiting for us. But yeah, fortunately the rolls were with us for that. <laughs> Yeah, it was a nice little sandbox. Uh, there mm -hmm. was a plethora of items that the party never even got to see, but that was by design. Uh, I thought it turned out real well. Uh, there was some question about whether or not it was funny enough. Um, was funny. Eh, yeah, and nay. I mean, you know, I, I, I didn't plan it to be Willy Wonka's mansion, so... Uh, and the party didn't find the really cool things. So uh, Captain Hart and his crew had gotten hit by a typhoon. They were on the ship or they were on the island at a shipwreck. Uh, so there were a lot of items in there. Uh, you'll be able to download that yeah, next year sometime. Uh, I still have plenty of shit before that. The other one was 332 and that was Cinderfella. Uh, the foursome that I had uh, were tasked with a love struck Contessa, the daughter of the Countess. Uh, she fell in love with somebody at the ball the previous night before. Uh, and all she could tell him was he, that he had a blue shirt and dreamy eyes and a smile that would light up the room. So the party had to figure out that three members of the court might have information. They did, in fact, talk to all three of them. Uh, in designing this scenario, uh, it was somewhat linear. But each, each third party, each of the members of court had different information. So depending on which one you followed, 
uh, then there were sub trees in there and they were tasked with a finding Flynn Ryder, AKA man custard, uh, and determine whether or not he was of suitable stock, uh, to be dating the Contessa in this case, uh, after several misadventures with angry cultists, a one-eyed gambler, uh, a lady with a rolling pin and, I would say a normal amount of uh, urine and feces thrown on them from the urban adventure. Uh, they did discover that Flynn Rider was okay. He was a solid C. So uh, they returned him there, but he did have a bit of a history with the ladies uh, and the Count, Count Valentine, of course. Uh says no uh the party still got paid the party was still successful it just turns out that flynn rider was too much of a philanderer uh to be seen with the contessa uh and that is where we left that that was the final uh adventure of the con and it ended at 10 p.m so again still suffering from hashtag con hangover uh and tonight uh Oh, that was a fast recap. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you notice certain people aren't doing it. <laughs> so. uh, true. Uh, <laughs> tonight, we're going to go ahead and discuss making magic. Uh, mm -hmm. Carrie was particularly interested in this. It was supposed to go a couple weeks ago and did not uh, due to issues. So tonight, we're going to go ahead and discuss making magic. Who doesn't? Uh, what they do, and uh, these guys and myself are going to go ahead and pick regular items and enchant those fuckers. So uh, we started with Carrie last time. We'll start with David this time. David, uh, somebody who makes magic items, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, like I said earlier, I was playing around with the class today, and Artificer is a great one for making magic items. Uh, in addition to uh, playing the character, like creating the, you know, uh, you know, standard magic items and things like that, um, you have infusions where infusions are just your artificer rolls uh, or on a table or you choose from a table of uh, kind of mundane magical items and things like that. Uh, so anywhere from like a bag of holding to uh something else but one of the things about making magic items that it can do it can infuse uh one of the uh like a regular item like a sword or armor or something like that and give it give it some kind of a buff uh whether it's a plus one plus two depending on your artificer level uh or any other effects to go with it so it's it's a great class uh for for that to actually produce magic items Oh, you muted. <laughs> no, nope. no, that's me. Uh, I, I've got a lot of problems with 5e. I mean, obviously, I'm an old guy and I like 2e, but for 5e, uh, that's true. One of the things I, I don't understand is the necessity of making all of these subclasses. And one of the things, especially for me, is the artificer. I, I, I honestly think it should be more of an NPC than a PC simply because it has a very specific use. Um, and I know you just built one. So go ahead and give me your thoughts and opinions on why it does make a good PC class. Um, well, the subclasses of it kind of, kind of help justify it being uh, uh, a PC class because you can explore things because like a lot of what like in the past i talked to people everybody um that i had played with that was playing wizard or something like that wish they had something uh class where they you know uh had everything potion based and like uh for every uh every i don't know uh so long or whatever the mechanic in to to make potions like on their uh, downtime and all that aside from just the alchemist, uh, you know, downtown activity, you know, like on a short rest, you're able to craft like two or three potions of healing or something like that. 
poisons, things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I can understand how you're saying, because one of the, the subclasses that I'm really not that keen on is like the artillerist, uh, because it's not really like you create this thing called an eldritch cannon, which is just like the sentient little cannon. Uh, you know, it can be handheld, but I mean, when I think of artillerist, I'm thinking more like, you know, Percy from, you know, Vox Machina, you know, creating an actual firearm. Uh, that's what I was going for. Instead, with uh, the Artificer now is you're, you're shaping a wand into something that looks <coughs> like a firearm, and it's really not. So uh, with that, it's just, you know, they call it artillerist, and yeah, it is artillery, but, you know, this cannon. And then uh, the Battlesmith. Uh, that I like because you actually built um, build like a mechanic manic, a mechanical defender, depending on the size of your your uh, your race or something like that. It can even double as a mount, and I know that that drives you nuts. You've hit me twice uh, with that. You know when I created a halfling using a mastiff as a mount. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I think it's just the versatility of it that I that I like, um, yeah, and again, the cool gadgets, I, I think, have a lot to do with it, too, so. Okay. Carrie, who makes your magic items? Okay, so you're an artificer, too, or are you a wizard? Well, the wit... <clears throat> Historically speaking, the wizard was predominantly the one who enchanted magic items, i.e. the enchanter. Uh, with 5e and the artificer, this is more of a gnome tinkerer kind of style uh, because the gnomes are, historically speaking, always the tinkerers, always building something. They built the submarine in Aquitania. They built the submarine in um antiquity uh they build a lot of weird stuff so uh the artificers are essentially engineers uh whereas wizards are the purveyors of mysticism for some reason yes <laughs> go ahead explain your position Colored by my opinion, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. They do have ma magic of their own, uh, based yeah. on the mechanics of spell casting and things like that. It's all in the spell pool of the the thing it's nothing considerably unique or anything like that so they're essentially enchanters they're essentially enchanters wearing a leather apron and pretty much metal. yeah yeah mm -hmm. And what's the starting hit die for an artificer? Uh, I think it's a D8. Okay, so it's the same as a wizard. Mm -hmm. 5e wizard. So, okay. um, yeah, I agree. Uh, but I think it, depending upon what your campaign is like, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of discussion on, well, what about gunpowder? Well, I have used gunpowder in the form of fireworks, on the Minotaur Islands. Uh, and that seems to work out fairly well. I mean, they can't... <laughs> Correct. They have to uh, get the sulfur, get the other uh, items. Uh, it, it's not... It, it's similar to Grogan's fire water, the highly explosive, very unstable dwarven liquor. 
uh, that I used to use in the second edition games. You roll Grogan's Firewater down an incline with a lit fuse, and you better run like hell because it's worse than a fireball. Uh, oh, yeah. I found but, that out in one of our episodes. <laughs> the Goonies like one. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that that is non-magical. And, and I'm all for that. But I, I think depending on what your campaign is, whether it's high magic or maybe you want to run an Italian Renaissance. Now, I, I could see artificers in an Italian Renaissance campaign setting. No problems with that. I, I just think for old school RP. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and something like that, I would see, I just, I get tired of, and I, I know this is a horrible opinion that a lot of people don't agree with. And that's why I love it so much is uh, I think if they don't stop feeding you guys candy for 5E, you're all going to get fat and have diabetes. So pull your head out of your ass and play a real character. <laughs> that, 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 is the, that is the old man gatekeeping, blah, blah, blah. That is. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Uh, you want to impress the shit out of me. You play a fucking wizard with four starting hit points and one spell, and you get to second level. And then I'll be impressed. All this other bullshit doesn't impress me. And oh, I, I, I get it. I totally <laughs> get it. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, is there an enchanting subclass to wizard, like an enchanter? Yeah, there is a, an enchanter. School, yeah. Okay, that's I didn't know if that was one of the schools. So yeah, so, and and that's that's. <clears throat> And that was how it was done in the older versions, because mm -hmm. a you had to find the mithril or the atomite or whatever w special wood for arrows and shit like that. Then you had to pay to have it enchanted, and it took time. I think in Five E we've lost track of time uh, because we live in an environment where, well, I want this now, and Amazon will deliver it by tomorrow, and that's how we're going to do this. When in reality. Uh, no, that's, that's not how life is. I mean, it is now, which is convenient until the internet goes down and then you fuckers are screwed. Uh, but I, I think we we've lost track of time and time is one of the more important aspects, especially in a campaign in our one shots. Nobody gives a crap. It's like having gold. Nobody cares. Uh, that's not the point. The point is have fun <laughs> for two hours in a I don't know here. <laughs> uh, you got enough to do whatever you want. So, uh, but if you're going to run a campaign, you need to do time. And now as an artificer class, if I were to have somebody do that <clears throat> in a campaign, I would go ahead and tell them you can make this, but you need a list of ingredients and go ahead and use that as the basis of the campaign goals. Uh, and then sprinkle it in. Okay, you got ingredient one and two in adventure one, but you know what? You got other people in your campaign, so they're going to do something in adventure two, and you're just going to have to sit on your ass till adventure three, maybe get another one. Or if you screw it up, you aren't going to get it. So as an, artif as an artificer class, <clears throat> I can see being a DM and using that to the DM's advantage. Uh, rather than just go to the local market and pick up every freaking item that you need. That's that, that takes the fun right out of the job. So um, now that I'm ranting, uh, let's move on to something else. Uh, <clears throat> that's right. <laughs> not yet. They aren't. I, I'm yes. not banned from Twitter yet. Again, uh, gods. I like God weapons, <clears throat> the, the mythical aspect of it. Uh, you know, Perseus's shield, Perseus's helmet, uh, you know, the Nemean lion to some extent from Hercules. Uh, those are all cool things. And those, uh, those are nice for old school scenarios, old school campaigns. Uh, they also work well in uh, low magic campaigns. If you're a miser like myself and don't give out a lot of magic, uh, it, it's really a kind of cool thing. I mean, uh, YouTube, Zadar and Camille, 
don't have shit for magic items, but the ones that you do are kind of cool and kind of special. I mean, two, what, two, three episodes ago, you guys got rings of feather falling. Now, I don't know if that's ever going to come in handy as you guys I don't know. Find balloons, but you know what? It's a nice backup to have. So <laughs> uh, I always like to keep them riveted. Uh, but yeah, the deity born items, I, I think, are kind of a cool, uh, often overused trope, uh, but uh, tropes are there for a reason. A lot of people use them. and they work so uh the god weapons are always cool god defenses same thing uh miscellaneous magic items not so much i mean you can do a, a spoon of stirring or the cauldron of food things of that nature those work uh but again <clears throat> if you're in a campaign that uh passes out magic like candy uh that is called a monty hall campaign those of you too young, Monty Hall was uh, a game show host. Uh, so look that up on Wikipedia and say, Jesus, how old is this guy? The answer is I'm very old. Damn. So <clears throat> um, that being said, those, I think, are your three major aspects. The gods, the wizards, and the artificers. Surely others can do it. And if we wait long enough and <clears throat> let wizards of the coast grab more money, Maybe barbarians can go ahead and create magic items out of tea or something. Uh, but, you know, it sh in my opinion, only my opinion, it should be limited. Uh, and we're starting to get away from that uh, to the, well, I want to do this culture. Um, my two cents. David, what do you think? No, no, I, I agree. Uh, there, there's a third class. I mean, <clears throat> there's another class that can do things, bards, because mm -hmm. they can steal knowledge from... I say steal, but appropriate knowledge from uh, different classes. <laughs> no, appropriate. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I, I, I have been playing in a campaign doing where my bard is actually making its own instrument and, and you know, learning the magic and seeking to learn the magic to infuse that magic into the instrument itself. I mean, yeah, there are instruments in the game, some that are legendary, you know, strive for and stuff like that. But I, my bard has those. Uh, it's just part of his storyline is that his family were crafters of wondrous items of instruments. And, and that was one of my story arcs is to learn how to do that. Um, you know, but things like scrolls and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, a bard, a bard can do something like that, you know, from, you know, going into the school of enchantment or something. Um, but to reiterate what you said about the God weapons, one of the things that I do like, they did it in uh, mythic odysseys of Theros and uh, also with uh, the, the adventures in wild mount, they have those God given items that are uh, they have different stages to them. They're, it's like, uh, awakened and then when you get to they're called vestiges vestiges of divergence and there's different levels that they go depending on the progression of your character you know it isn't just given to you you got to earn it to get it up to the next level and in, in, in some kind of story arc or something like that you know your character does something particularly evil well the item can turn to something particularly evil or something like that so that's oh, one okay. of the well, yeah, I thought you would because there's consequences for, you know, your actions using these items. So, like a time travel amulet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that 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 is a good. That's a good example. That that is a really good example. So, well, maybe if you two get out a Nathian, one of these, you can figure out what how that thing was created. Uh, yeah. Right Spoiler now, alert, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now we're now we're doing Groundhog Day and Nathan. So <laughs> with Brock Hardjaw's wife. Yeah, exactly. Good call. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So uh, that being said, uh, I I think that takes us to a nice point. We're going to go ahead and uh, now for the creative portion, uh, which I do dearly love, uh, our staff here or our panel, uh, look around, something within arm's reach of you. Go ahead and grab that. Make it a magic item. Uh, tell me what level it is and what power it does. And uh, bonus points if you can tell me uh, who created it. Uh, Stupid cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying how about to think. An, an object. Everything I've got is like game related. So it's just like, okay. Or a toy. Okay, nice. what's the nail brush? What what is the nail brush called? Okay. Okay. Uh, how does it do that? Now, uh, is this a permanent thing? Uh, say artifact level, or do you have to reapply? So how long does this, uh, I guess, charisma bonus last? Okay. How often can you use it a day? And the charisma bonus is what? Plus one or persuasion or charm or my favorite seduction. Okay. Who made it? You know what? I'm I'm digging that. Uh, I I like that idea. That's a good concept. Uh, Avon, male or female? Of course. Uh, can you lose it? Does it ever disappear? Or is it you know this minor magic item that you hang on to and you're good to go? Ooh, that's cool. Uh, David, what you got for me? A beer bottle or a koozie? Oh, <laughs> okay. no, the, the, the bottle. All I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, the drunkard's gambit. You never know what the liquid inside is going to be. <laughs> I, I'm digging that. Uh, mm -hmm. Drunkard's gambit. Uh, what does it do? Besides uh, various liquors? Is it always various liquors or is it just various drink? Uh, it's... Uh, yeah, various liquids or um, think of it as like an alchemy jug that could okay. uh, that can also uh, produce things of healing. Um, the alcohol, <laughs> but it's blind. It's like a blind taste test. You don't know what's going to happen. You have to roll. A, you have to roll. I don't know. Let's say a d6, okay. depending on your roll, determines what's going to come out of it. So, you know, could be booze, could be a potion of yelling, could be, you know, I, it could be poison, but I don't know if I want to go that far to have a deadly poison. Maybe some, <laughs> no, maybe some, some kind of, I don't know, potion that gives, you know, your head shrinks or something like that. I don't know. Something completely ridiculous. Exactly. How, uh, how, how often do you get to drink from this uh drunkard's gambit uh every long rest so every eight hours okay uh do you get to keep it forever or does it disappear uh it no you get to keep it forever i i always hate that thing where you have to roll a d20 at the end to see whether whether or not you know you keep it if you expend the last charge Sure. Uh, there's no charges on it. It just resets at dawn or something like that. So. Cool. Who made it? Uh, yeah, a drunken wizard. <laughs> Named? Uh, oh, God. Frank. Drunken wizard named Frank. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, Frank the Wise or something like that. I don't know. 
No, Bullshit, no. Kiss ass. <laughs> I'm not it. not trying to kiss ass. I'm trying to come up with some kind of I don't know something. Hans Str- Bud Stro. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or uh, yeah, uh, Natalie Light or something like that. You know, Natty Light, Natural Light. Nice. A druid. A druid. Okay. Yeah, name nice. natural light. So natural light. There you go. I like that idea. That's kind of cool. Uh, scratch that out. This is the pen I'm using. This is the pen. This is the magic pen. Uh, <laughs> it is called the Crimson Scribe. Okay. And scribe it is a magical writing utensil uh it should probably have a feather on it but i live in the 21st century and i don't have one of those uh it is a magical pencil or writing utensil uh, there you go uh all you have to do is possess it call the key word to it write or scribe something like that uh and it will go ahead and write on any parchment, vellum, or product that it can. Uh, it is good for an hour. And then it has to reset for a full day. Uh, but it makes transcribing things easier. It cannot do magical scrolls, though. Uh, so it is a mundane magic item. Uh, it was created uh, by the scribe Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga, nice. Wow. Yeah, that's almost as good as my wizard Frank. <laughs> yeah. Tyga, you know what? I bet if we queried the youth of uh, this channel, they wouldn't know what the Ticonderoga means. No, so, prob- no probably so not. I think, I think that's it. So you guys have each, all three of us have given us some rather mundane items. Um, time. We got 15 minutes. Uh, give me something just fantastic, be it an artifact or a heavy duty magic item. Something that does something really fucking awesome. Oh, okay. Okay. Nail polish. Such as animate it. <clears throat> so telekinetic properties. Okay. Nail polish with telekinetic properties. Uh, what's it called? OPI. OP. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you nice. no longer are allowed to bitch about david or my name right right okay the reflection pool mm. now do you have to apply it to your fingers or toes i'm assuming okay uh how much is in the jar is it just good for one use because i uh if it's going to be an artifact you should probably put a limit on it i think you, you should have some kind of application limitation because we're talking something pretty powerful. <clears throat> and, and if I may make a suggestion, uh, you cannot see the color through the container. Maybe a different color controls how much strength you can do so if you had say a yellow it can control something up to a pound okay. so even a mountain
So it's telekinetic, so it only it can move it up, down, left, right. Uh, I, I like the idea. I just think, how, how long are you going to be able to move something once you've applied it? Ooh. No. I, <clears throat> well, here, here's my concern. I mean, it's a great, great concept. But, oh, okay, well, you've stumbled into the dragon's lair. Oh, bam, 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 bam. Oh, okay. Okay, and how about rather than 12 hours, make it just an hour. So if you fucked up your time frame, you've screwed yourself. Okay. Once a day is good. Yeah, you got to put a limit on that. Uh, 30 minutes pre app. Uh, I, I think we'll just kill all the animals tonight. 30 minutes once a day. Okay, David, what you got? Okay. Uh... I was thinking of a journal or an enchanted journal or book, notebook or something like that, where the, the, uh, the thing that's amazing that what you can do is, is you could describe like um, a creature that is seeing a description of what is going on, like as far as the weather or something or what you would like it to be. And you rip out the page and, you know, if it's a creature that you've described or something like that, the, the creature appears. Uh, if it's a phenomenon, something like that, like a uh, sunny day or you want to get more ominous meteor shower or something like that, you know. Okay. I don't know. Would you need at least some part of a spell component, say mm -hmm. hair of a bugbear a meteorite, a crushed meteorite, something of that nature? Yeah, you could put some kind of uh, component requirement on it. Um, I got the idea. There was an old uh, movie with Jason Robarts and uh, Jonathan Price called Something Wicked This Way Comes. Mm -hmm. And he had the book, and it's the story, and he'd throw the pages at him and stuff like that, and the things would, would come out of it. And that's 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 what I'm thinking of. Uh, it's kind of fueling the ideas for that, you know. It's like something they related or something. So, uh, so I'm assuming that there's a limited number of pages on this thing. Yeah, last page. That's how many it. page? How many pages are you gonna do, or how, are you gonna make them roll something for it? Um, I, it would be interesting to to make them roll something for it, or I would just percentage. Cap it. <laughs> there you go 100 there you go <laughs> okay so wonder what you require for sunshine uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. um honey maybe something like that or i don't know maybe candles wax or something like that i, I don't know something i don't know uh, that would be for light I would say candle wax for light um, my, la my last item is this it's clearly a USB cable right. uh, but uh, I would call it the ebony cable because of my complete oh, my con fatigue uh, <laughs> but Unlike the silver thread that you use to get to the astral plane, pitch for Gen Con this year, it's going to be the astral adventure. Uh, the ebony cable allows you to travel any of the planes. Uh, it's more durable than the silver thread used by astral travelers. Uh, and it is not affected by any of the natural landscapes of the plane. So you can equally go to the plane of water or to the plane of fire. Uh, the item would have to suffer a, a zero one critical fail. Uh, 
So this item is a travel device. Uh, I would say four to six feet long. Uh, that way you can stretch it out. One person can be on one side, one person can be on the other. Uh, any of those who touch the item and the magical keyword, how you discover it is up to the DM, uh, would allow it to power. Uh, and then the owner, once you arrive, say, I'm going to arrive at the planet of uh, Nirvana, the owner the coil then goes back up into their hand and they can stuff it into their belt pouch until they need it again. Uh, this item can only be used <clears throat> once a day uh, at the beginning of each day and the end of each day, the owner would have to roll a percentage. If you roll a zero one, it's broken. Uh, so you better hope you're on the plane that you're on. Uh, or wanted to be, uh, otherwise you're fuck. Uh, but if you roll a 100, it will grant you the opportunity to use it one extra time. So I, I think that's kind of fair. What do you guys think on? It's no, it, it's one use per day. So, and, yeah. no, it once it breaks, it is done so uh you wake up eat your breakfast 8 a.m you're going to tartarus uh you roll oh one you land on tartarus but that thing is broken and you gotta find a way to get the fuck home uh or uh you have to wait if it doesn't break you have to wait till 8 a.m the next day so you're trapped on that plane for 24 hours unless you rolled a 100 and then you could use it at 4 p.m. again. Uh, but then you wouldn't be able to use it again until 8 a.m. You would still have to roll on that extra roll, though. So I think that's ebony. Uh, ebony filament. Let's go with ebony filament. I like that better. Because I still want to display... Uh, I, I want it to appear to be very fragile, made from Italy. Uh, but I, I think it would be durable. So opinions on that, suggestions on making it better or worse? Uh, I mean, I wasn't familiar about the whole astral, uh, the silver thread or something like that. Um, when, when you travel the astral plane, the normal or the accepted version uh, in internal mythology or game mythology is uh, that it's only your consciousness going out to that plane. Your physical body is still present and there's just a silver filament that broaches over to that plane. Uh, and, and you, in old school, I don't know about new because we never really play that high. One of the things was you had to have a silver thread. Now, if you traveled to the plane and that thread got cut uh it would sever its connection with you and i can't remember you either died instantly or you were stuck there uh mm -hmm. yeah so it, it, it's dicey in the scenarios we've used on planar adventures uh, we haven't bothered to use that. Now, the astral plane adventure for Gen Con, something totally different. They're going to gate their way in um, because, long story short, where they're at's getting overrun and they're going to need a special magic item. And that's only on the astral plane. And if they don't make it, the kingdom's going to fall. So uh, that is Gen Con. Three runnings of it this year. Ashley's going to be running one of them. I'm going to run the other two. Should be kind of fun. Four hours, six players, six level PCs. Um, but yeah, that the ebony filament would not be required. But I, I think that uh, in our Socium project, uh, we're each going to come up with some different items, whether they be important NPCs, magic items, legendary places, things of that nature. So any of these items 
would certainly fit in that. So that being said, and all three of us suffering hashtag con hangover, uh, we'll kill it off a little early tonight. David, what are your final thoughts? Uh, make it magic. It's always fun. Uh, I, that's when I, when I'm thinking about new scenarios and stuff like that, I like to think about what objects that I'm going to put in there and try to, sometimes I build the story around that. So, mm-hmm. so. uh, Carrie, final thoughts. Well, feel the power course. <laughs> Ah, pretty soon she'll be a DM, and then I can just sit and fucking play again. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you never know. You can dream. <laughs> you you, you got to do it. You got to take that first step. So, uh, folks, we yeah, we hope we've given you something to think about. Uh, aside from why are these guys so tired, and boring tonight? Right. Trust me, uh, <laughs> it was a very long weekend, uh, and I, yeah. Carrie and I even took yesterday off. So. It was kind of rough. It was rewarding. It always is. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Oceana is going to be very happy. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is draining. Everybody had a good time that I talked to. Uh, and again, as David has pointed out, the, the venue's kind of clever. If you want to see it for yourself, it is wide open now. Topia.io slash murder hobo con all one word. Uh, or just hit us up at M Hobo Inc on Twitter or Gmail. We'll go ahead and give me that link, or you just go through all of the regular tweets. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to be on the show, either on a one shot next Saturday or uh, between the rolls in two weeks, next week is Socium, uh, hit us up, Hobo Inc, Twitter and Gmail. If you are in the market for some custom dice, go on over to Twitter, find at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter, uh, see if they got the time or the energy to go ahead and make some. And then if you want to help out your nasal passage with some adventure sense, go over to oddfishgames.com. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer like me, only gooder, uh, check out their shine system. This Thursday is the cred campaign. So all you Cthulhu horror fans rejoice. They're coming back this Saturday. Uh, I haven't heard from Rob yet, but I would assume he's in. Uh, it looks like it's going to be calamity. A. Eh? these guys are in the city of Yor or the city of Mayo. They haven't really figured that out. Uh, who knows what, cool magic item rob is going to get next he's already got the bunny slippers and the bear blanket uh and the commodore hat which is the neck pillow uh so if you like post-apocalyptical check that out folks for all of us here at murder hobo inc uh thank you for joining us sorry we were so tired it was worth it uh but We hope to see you on Thursday with Kyle's cred campaign. Let's do the hug and kiss and wave and bullshit and yawn. Go X. Bye, everybody. Don't forget Murder of Ocon.